Chapter 1, Part 2, The Nature of Values, from Ethical Choices, an, introdu an Introduction to Moral Philosophy with Cases. In this video, you'll have the opportunity to reflect on the kinds of things that you value. You'll learn what a normative claim is, and how to know if a claim is normative. You'll learn the difference between a value claim, a prescriptive claim, and a descriptive claim. And you'll learn about an account of what's going on when people disagree that I think is helpful for making sense of disagreement. What is really important to you? I'm going to give you just a moment to think about the answer to that question. What's really important to you? Is it friendship? Love? Family? Faith? Health? Happiness? The things that are most important to you are called your values. Our choices attempt to represent what is most important to us. Now, what does this mean? Our choices attempt to represent what is most important to us. Um, what I think that it means is that uh, the choices that we make are in line and follow from the things that we value. Values are normative. This means that they belong to some standard or norm that allows them to be used for evaluation. To say that a road is no good appeals to a standard about what roads should be like. If I say that Veromi is honest, I'm saying that she measures up to a high standard of truth-telling. If a doctor says that you have a poor heart, the doctor is comparing your heart to a normal functioning heart and making a claim about its condition. Each of these value claims refers to some kind of standard and is evaluating a thing relative to this standard. We normally act according to our values, but if something is genuinely valuable, then presumably we ought to act to promote this value. So genuine values support and explain what we should do. If health is genuinely important in itself, then you ought to do what preserves and improves your health. If living a sedentary lifestyle is bad for you, then you should exercise, right? In fact, maybe you have a responsibility to exercise. If friendship is a genuine good, then you should cultivate relationships by being friendly towards others, sharing interests, and spending time with them. Values call for action. Now, what do you think of this model? Do you agree that the things that we should do follow from the things that we value? There are two kinds of normative claims, prescriptive claims and value claims. Prescriptive claims include words like should and ought. They prescribe or prohibit specific things. So should or ought is a prescriptive claim, uh, and it prescribes or prohibits specific things. People shouldn't lie is prohibiting lying. You ought to attend that lecture tells you to do something. Prescriptive claim, here's an example. You should not drive on this road. You should not drive on this road. What are some other examples of prescriptive claims? So claims that involve things like should or ought or should not or ought not. Value claims include modifiers like good and bad or other value words. They claim to identify the value of an object or an action. This introduction to ethics class is amazing! is making a claim about the value of this class. Dr. Nash's singing voice is bad, is making a claim about the lack of value of my singing voice, which I assure you is true. 
Here's an example of a couple of value claims. This road is bad, or my computer is very good. Notice that both prescriptive claims and value claims, because they're normative claims, involve some kind of measure or ideal to establish the claim. So there's always something that we can use as a measure. Remember, that's what it means for a claim to be normative. Value claims and pres prescriptive claims need to be carefully dis distinguished from descriptive claims. All right. So before we move on to descriptive claims, think of an example of a value claim. Okay, descriptive claims. A descriptive claim asserts something about how the world is, not how it should be. This is important because the way that things are is not always the way that they should be. Man, very, very true. The way that things are is not always the way that they should be. Descriptive claims don't appeal to any standard, and they don't evaluate. They simply describe, all right? Jeff is six feet tall. I used to hate broccoli. Over a billion people will remain in desperate poverty this coming year. What's an example of a descriptive claim that you can come up with? All right, let's move on to a story about Bill. At the store where you work, you notice Bill, one of the employees, stealing small amounts of money from the cash register. Bill's always lots of fun. Your job would be pretty unpleasant without him. He's also a friend. In fact, he helped you get your job. But the store manager, having recently noticed cash shortages, now for several days, has threatened that no one will get an end-of-the-month bonus if the shortages continue. Should you report Bill to the manager? And importantly, why do you think that you should do what it is that you want to do in this situation? All right, so what do you do in this situation and why? And what value is leading to your decision here? Now I'm going to pause for a moment because I want you to think about this. This will come back up in uh, one of the assignments this week. What do you do in this situation and why? And, and what is it that's leading you to do it? Now, if we were in an in-person class, I would ask this out loud, and what we would discover is that different classmates have different views on what it is that we should do in this case and why. Now, I, I can't do that uh, in this video, um, although we will do it in a discussion this week. But to sort of imagine how this is like, so we can talk about disagreement here in a moment, what's another way that someone could act in this situation? And that this is a way that conflicts with the way that you came up with in the previous two questions. And, and what value is leading to this decision, the decision that conflicts with yours? Now look, we might decide that we want to turn Bill in because we value honesty, right, or not stealing. We might, on the other hand, uh, decide to not say anything because we value friendship. Uh, and are there other ways that we could respond? Inevitably, there are. And ask yourself, what values are leading to these other decisions? Okay. Now, the story about Bill brings us into a model of a way to think about disagreement. So it may seem that people disagree because they have different values. However, interestingly, most people tend to share most values, right? Where people differ is in the importance that they assign to each of their values. Think back to the story of Bill stealing from the register and the options that we came up with, right? Maybe we uh, value honesty and not stealing, 
right? And so we just think we should turn Bill in. But notice that if we value honesty, that doesn't mean that we don't value friendship, right? And the other side uh, that might disagree with us says that, no, uh, I value friendship even more than honesty, right? But that doesn't mean that they don't value honesty. It just means that they value friendship more, right? So notice that we probably tend to share most of the same values. And when we disagree, what we're disagreeing about is the importance that we assign to each of these values. So what, what do you think of this model of disagreement? Now, does it speak to you? Is it helpful? Uh, or do you just find it garbage and you don't, you don't, you don't buy it at all? We well, have an opportunity uh, to answer these questions in one of the assignments this week. So to bring things together, good and bad apply to values. Right and wrong apply to duties, which are things that we ought to do. Values are normative, which means that we can use them for evaluation because they belong to a standard. Genuine values support and explain what we should do. To put this another way, if we genuinely think that an action is good, then we ought to do this action. Or at least this point suggests that. And finally, when people disagree, it often isn't because they share different values. It's instead because different people assign different importance to individual values. All right, to review. How do we define ethics? What's the difference between good and bad and right and wrong? What's a normative claim, and how do we know when a claim is normative? What's the difference between a value claim, a prescriptive claim, and a descriptive claim? Think to yourself about an example of each. Explain the account that was given about what's going on when people disagree. What, what is it that you thought of this account? 